so the Cowboys defense, they came out. My apologies here. Let me pull this back down. They came out. They get a sack fumble. They're physical. They set the tone. Dallas comes out in a nice 12 personnel. Remember, what Skip Pete said. Going to play it differently when it's a different back. First play of the game, 12 personnel. Going to match that defense's physicality. Get a nice five-yard run. I mean, you knew off the rip, Cowboys Nation, though. <laughs> Look at Aaron Donald and McGovern. McGovern was like, God dang it, I'm going to be in for a long day here, boy. But, hey, just enough. Five yards. Got to love it. Hey, Kellen, let's go right back to that, right? Let no? No? We're going to go empty? A little bit of a glitch. First play of the game, you get five yards, and, and now we're going empty. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Remember, we talked about when the teams are playing off. I'm sorry, when the Rams are playing off, you have that quick game available. So let's go take a look at the quick game, which was there. Uh, but we, you know, what Rush does is he's a very predetermined guy. He was going there all the way, no matter what was happening here. Um, he, he decided to look off. I don't know why, but he decided to look off here. When he got a hook here, there was really no need to do that. I think if he looks this way, he sees that the hook's there, but not there at the same time, and the quick game is. I don't know if he makes that guy miss a score touchdown, but I think we do get a positive game. Quick game was there. We really didn't go back to this, I think maybe once, but I would have liked to see us do it. Uh, but Run that back. Hold up, because this is the look I was talking about to the caller on the phone. I absolutely love this look. It's very Ram-ish, right? 11 personnel believe it or not this is three tight end or three wide receivers not three tight ends they go 11 personnel but it's tight uh they do this a lot the rams that is they do this a lot with cooper uh cup and i like this from a run it back and use action option because you can get some good things out of this man you can get a a play action here and he comes up the seam I, i've seen the San Francisco 49ers do this with uh, Kyle Juszczyk, and he gets wide open down here. You can get a C.D. Lamb out here. You can get Michael Gallup faking the block and coming out. I just think there's a lot of good things that can come out of this look. So I would like to see them running back. And you got positive yards out of it. So there are some concepts we're going to like here. Uh, nice pre-snap, post-snap action, quick game, good read, easy, positive yards. So we come back to this, this quick game against the, the uh, LA Rams. You're going to get pre-snap action with the motion and then a post-snap action. I mean, it was supposed to be a fake, but the post-snap action doesn't do a whole lot, but it does enough. And this is what I mean by post-snap action. You got the supposed to be fake handoff, but I think Zeke is worried about blocking. And this is what I love, the concept here. These two guys pushing. Either he commits back here or he commits up here. If he commits back, you got what you got. If he comes up, this is going to be here at a later date in the season, maybe a later time in the game. Really good concept, really good call, easy throw, good read. Get you some yards. I like it. I thought this was an interesting look. I don't know what this, this one would be called with McGovern here. We're used to seeing the Hulk formation, right? Where there's two offensive guards in the backfield. Well, we got one offensive guard and you got a pistol. What is this, the Hawk Buster? You got a pistol out of it interesting but it's going to create a unique assignment up front 91 is not necessarily over top of Biotis. he's shading a little bit to the inside aka the eye but watch Biotis completely ignore him because he knows Connor mcgovern is coming so this is a, a unique assignment here you don't normally see guys just ignore guys right over top of them completely ignores them and you get positive yards now i think old zeke would have wanted to smoke I think old Zeke sees this and says, oh, I'm going to eat this outside and please, Jalen, try me. But you get positive yards. We'll take it. Oh, man, this one, man. Michael Gobb's going to want this one back. First of all, you get this bunch to the right. I think Cooper Cup is looking Cooper Cup. Cooper Rush is looking his chops over here. You got one verse, one V one. Michael Gallup. This is the easy read here, but he's already cheating in. And to be completely honest, the route that Michael Gallup is going to run, he's never going to get back. Cup just, Cup, Rush just has to hold it for him. 
tick second longer to allow this route to develop. The route develops. You get an excellent pressure throw. Mike, you got to have it. I mean, if he catches this, he's getting upfield. Maybe he scores, man. Who knows? But you got to have that. You can't drop that. We're, there weren't a ton of easy throws in this game, um, but but this one pff, may be one of the easiest ones. Great route, man. I mean, routed my man up. But you got to have it, though. It's going to be another got to have it moment. Y'all just wait. Okay, 12 empty. Okay, 12 empty spread sitting on the hooks. Good read, good throw. Okay, so they come out in what looks like a traditional 12. They get to the line of scrimmage. Hey, you get over here, you get over here, and we're going to go spread here. We're going to empty this thing out. We're going to empty this thing out. Let me get a good read. What's going on out here? Cooper Rush is taking a look. All right. I got one, one. What is this guy going to do if they run this zone? And what teams have been doing lately, if you've been noticing some of these breakdowns, They've been bracketing this hook because that's what the Cowboys like to do. So that's and that's probably his assignment anyway. Take a look at it. I mean, this is going to be a good read, a good by both the wide receiver and the quarterback. He sprints over there to set on that hook as opposed to floating in the middle. And that opens this thing up. Cooper Rush sees it. Great, great route. Easy pitch and catch. Move the chains first down. What happens two plays later? Remember, the very first play of the game, Ezekiel Elliott, 12 personnel in the backfield. You get a nice five-yard gain. Tony Pollard's back there, traditional 12 personnel. Look at the blocking here you're going to get from, you can't barely see him, but my bad. Uh, Noah Brown, I want you all to watch Noah Brown. I want you all to watch Peyton Hendershot. And I want you to watch Semi Fehoko. I'm going to let this thing run. The effort from 87 and 81 is crazy. Noah Brown's going to get in, seal, and watch these guys. I mean, you need that type of effort for these long blocks. But I, I don't think we can eliminate what Noah did here. And this is in Noah's wheelhouse. I mean, this is textbook. Look at the effort. You don't stop till the whistle blows. You love to see it. Now, let's take a look at the line because the line also won on this, too. I just need you to hold. You're going to get a great combo block from 63 and 70. Amazing combo block here. But watch. I mean, let's watch. Let's watch. Or let's watch 63 and 70 real quick. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful right there. Huh. And he gets right on Bobby Wagner. Let's take a look at checking on McGovern. McGovern gets j just enough. <laughs> Boy, I tell you that D Aaron Donald is strong, man. But all you got to do is get just enough of AD. And he gets just enough, man. I know he's falling all over the place. Now, finally, take a look at Tyler Smith. This is what makes Tyler Smith special from an athletic standpoint. You got to be able to get back around and make this block or the defensive end here can get this tackle. He combos but realizes he's coming down hard. And watch how he flips his hips and finishes that block. I mean, that's good stuff. And it's off to the races. Just an all-around, all-around great effort from the line, from the wide receivers, and Tony Pollard to the crib. Toe drag, swag, bucket drop. During the game, you don't see all this other stuff that we're going to talk about here. So let's, let's talk about the toe drag swag, and the bucket drop right quick. I mean, I'm this ridiculous, fantastic throw, and I don't know how my man kept his feet in bounds. I mean, that's a bucket. I said this two weeks ago. It might have been last week. That's a bucket drop, bro. 100%. Look at Mike. I got that. One of the best on the sidelines, man. One of the best. Now, let's take a look at the action on the opposite side. And this is what surprised me here. The bunch, I love these bunch formations that Kellen is doing. And the dagger also wins. The Cowboys have found something out within this offense. The dagger won last week, and you had Noah Brown for a deep shot. The same play, the same concept, you're going to get a dagger for it. He's going to run a streak, and right behind it, you're going to get C.D. Lamb come on this deep end. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, you just watch. In fact, in my opinion right now, they're already out of position. Now it's a matter of getting this guy off his spot. I mean, there's nothing really he can do in general if you just you know, put this on a rope. But it's this here. Now, by the time he releases the ball, this, this guy's already out the picture. But that's six. I mean, Noah Brown ain't, he ain't a speedster. But that's six. So I will go back to this, and that's why I say run it back, and that's why I say maybe six, not three, because the Cowboys got three on this possession as opposed to six. But I would continue to run these dagger concepts, man. I just would. And, again, what happens when you're a, a predetermined guy, when you are – I want to get the ball out right away. Things don't have a chance to quite develop as much. Here's the one, the one thing that they could have did to hit this was play action under center because Coop – is much more patient thrower from play action than he is when it's not. But the, the dagger concept worked. You got the, oh, this is third and long too, by the way. You got the bucket drop for the first down. So you win. Long story short, you got three there. That helped. Maybe could have got six. Up front, I don't understand this one. Maybe Vach can explain this. Big Duke can explain this. Is this a miscommunication between 66 and 63? Is this a miscommunication? Because there's no reason why you should just be letting letting him kind of just go through here. Take a look. I, I get there's responsibility up here at the second level, but I mean, what is Zeke supposed to do here? <laughs> you know, we, we've seen this now a few times over the few weeks. Who? So I, I believe this might be on 66, to be honest, because I don't know why. Yeah, why would you be triple teaming here? I think you should be checking here, and then Biotis is going to get up to the next level. And it doesn't work out. Miscommunication. Can't pass them off like that. Trap coverage. So, not too many teams have really done this to Cooper Rush just yet, surprisingly. But but I figured at some point it'll happen. We know he likes to get the rock out quick. They know he likes to get the rock out quick. I'm going to sugar these A-gaps here. When that happens, Cooper is a predetermined quarterback. Hey, watch 45. 45 is the mic. He may be coming. I love this concept, by the way. One, two, three. One, two, three. I love the concept. It kind of reminds me of what happened in New York. Let's let it roll a little bit. And then we're going to run it back. Instead of Bobby Wagner coming on the blitz, goes into the hook zone, gets a PBU. But here's why I love this concept. Let's take a look at C.D. Lamb has to sit here because you want him to bring in these guys. The route isn't finished, but... This would have been interesting to see Peyton Hendershot against this safety one-on-one down here. But I think the throw was clearly to Ezekiel Elliott. And the reason why I say 21 versus cornerback is because, I mean, I don't know if he gets the first down. But I'll take my chances with the cornerback going heads up in the open field against Ezekiel Elliott. Just saying. But we got to watch out for those trap coverages. And this is from the other angle here. Looks like we're going to get a blitz. Nope, he falls back. Predetermined. Knock it down. 12 personnel play action. Ah, this is what I don't like. Two versus six. I don't like that. I don't like it. We hadn't seen a lot of this just quite yet. Um, and when we did, what did we say they were doing? They were going deep. But let's take a look at the 12 personnel play action here. And you're going to get basically uh, double set on the other side. Here we go. Play action. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Y'all know I don't like that. You know I don't like that. But we're not pressing downfield if you look at the film that we looked at last week we were pressing and pushing and pushing downfield we're running these kind of deep outs and then it's deep in hey it is what it is but 2v6 that's tough that, that that's a tough ask now he does get the ball out here but again 2v6 i don't like it and this is kind of what i said in week one when dak was trying to throw in the 2v6 just drop it off just, just dump it down and get the chunk. Look at all this green. Just dump it down. And we, you all know, I hate those hash mark throws on the opposite hash with Rush. He don't. Have, that's not his game. A uh, bunch wins, pressure throw. Gotta have it. Once again, nothing is really coming super, super easy from a passing game department in this game. So when you do get throws that hit, you've got to have it, man. Another good pressure throw in his face. 
gets hit. Reward your quarterback. By the way, uh, I say the bunch wins because because I love this concept here. He's going to push up. Uh, I believe this is Peyton Hendershot or, or, yeah, Peyton Hendershot. Holds him just a little bit. That's doing his job. You're going to get this out. You're going to get this hook. You got to have this, C.D. Lamb. You, you got to have this. You got to reward your quarterback for getting smashed in the face, man. Two got to have drops. Can't do it. Won't do it. Uh, 12 personnel, great execution. This is the final play, y'all. I just wanted to point this out because watch 89, Walsh 99, and then he boomerangs back to 45, which is Bobby Wagner. I thought this was... Peyton Hendershot is doing... I'm impressed with his blocking. It improves week in, week out. But just take a look at Peyton. Going to wash 99. Get back. Oh. I mean, you got to love that. Let me help out my guy. And let me get back and open up this lane. Beautiful. <laughs> look, at, look at Cuzzo. I haven't mentioned his name the entire time. Terrence still be wanting to smoke. Look how fast he get over there. Oh. How can you not like watching O-line play, man? <laughs> How can you not like watching? That'll do it, man, for this week's version of Tale of the Tape. A lot of good things there. A lot of things we need to improve on. But as you can see, there's still, there's still possibilities within this offense. There still is, which is why I say here, there's room to improve, and that's scary. You're on a four-game winning streak. You're four and one. And your offense, not even half of what, what it could be. This video is brought to you by our friends at Willard Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Willard is your go-to destination for air conditioning, heating, plumbing, air quality, insulation, ductwork, and much more. They've served the DFW area for over 30 years, and with their 100% money-back guarantee and 24-7 emergency service available, it's no surprise they have the best client reviews in the business. We know how brutal these summer months can be without the proper AC system, which is why you need to call Willard Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing today. They'll keep your home cool with the highest air quality with guaranteed top-notch customer service. It's only getting hotter here in Dallas, so schedule your service today at willardac.com.